In this video, we're going to delve into the process of upgrading the firmware of your eating CNC product. When I talk about firmware, I refer to the software running locally on a device. Although firmware updates are rare, they are sometimes required if a new feature is added that also needs a change to the firmware. Don't forget to subscribe and notify. Okay, let's go! Previously, each of our products had its own specific tool for firmware upgrades. However, we've recently introduced a new universal tool that can be used for any eating CNC product, significantly simplifying the firmware upgrade process. This new tool, along with the latest firmware, is included since the version 5.1 release of our software. First, I will guide you to the location of the firmware and the new tool. To find these, navigate to the folder where you have installed the PC software and enter a folder called bin. The new folder that you should look for is called firmware. Let's take a closer look at this folder. Inside, you will find a collection of folders, each representing one of our products and containing their respective firmware. For most products, there's only one firmware file. However, for products like the CPU 5B and CPU 5A, there are two versions, the USB version and the network version the new tool. If you go back to the bin folder and scroll down a little you will see the tool called Firmware Tool UI. We come back to this in a while. Before continuing, I want to show you where you can find more information, for example about upgrading your product's firmware. For this, go to the website docs.eatingcnc.com. Here, you can find a lot of information about our products, how to use them, and more. In this case, we're going to look up information about a firmware upgrade, so we go to the search bar and type in firmware. There, you can see a link already showing up. Click on it, and now you see an overview of the documentation related to firmware upgrade. The important thing I want you to show is an overview of products and how to put the product in a so-called bootloader mode. This bootload mode enables you to upgrade the product with new firmware. Let's go to the table with an overview of the products. The first column speaks for itself, in the second column, you see the method and how it can be upgraded. Finally, the third column shows what needs to be done to get the product in the bootload mode. For most products, you need to remove or put a jumper on the product. More information about it can be found by clicking on the link in the table. For example, for the CPU 5A, you can click on the text JMP1, which shows where the jumper needs to be removed. For the CNC 530, you must place a jumper to ensure it enables the bootloader mode at startup. By clicking on the link, you can see where that can be found. Okay, let's see how to put the CPU 5A in bootloader mode. For this demonstration, we use an USB version and it is also USB powered. I will start by showing how the controller behaves when it normally starts. We connect the power and observe the LEDs and it shows that the controller has started normally. Disconnect the power by removing the USB cable. Now we need to remove the jumper one and reconnect the power. The controller now starts with the two LEDs toggling. This specific pattern of toggling indicates that the board is in bootloader mode. You'll probably have observed that the two LEDs stop toggling after about five seconds. To avoid the controller getting stuck in the bootloader mode, it contains a timeout of about 5 seconds before automatically exiting it. Now, let's look at the CNC 530. This controller is a network device. As shown in the documentation, you have to place the jumper for it to start the bootloader. Without the jumper, you will see the LED with the text boot to begin flashing, indicating that the controller has started. The jumper will first start the controller's bootloader firmware, it will time out after 5 seconds, exit the bootloader firmware, and start the standard firmware on the controller. This is identical to the previous example with the CPU 5A. These two examples show how a device can be put in a bootloader mode. Let's now start the bootloader PC software. When you want to use the bootloader PC software, make sure that the controller is powered off. You see two checkboxes on the left. Usually, you can leave them both checked. It indicates whether it should look for both a USB and network devices. Please note that in order to find a network device, the IP address of the device needs to be identical to the IP address shown here. If this is different from the default IP address, please change the IP address and press set. I will now power on the CPU 5 board. As soon as it is detected, you will see it appear on the left. I will now click on that, and it will show the CPU 5A information. At the top right, you see a small image of the board, and here you also see the current bootloader firmware version. 
Please note that this is not the same as the firmware version you are about to upload. That current firmware version is shown at the top when you start our PC control software. There are two CPU 5A versions, the USB version and the network version. This tool cannot distinguish these two, only pointing to the folder containing both firmware versions. So now I only have to click on the file button and a window will open showing the folder with two versions. In this case, I'm using the USB variant, so I will double click on that. Press the program button and the new firmware is uploaded to the controller. Here you can see that it is finished and you've successfully updated your controller firmware. Now close the PC application, power down the controller, and remember the bootloader jumper. Next, I will demonstrate it with the CNC 530. Although this is a network device, you will see it works exactly as with the CPU 5A. Start the PC software and power up the board and you'll notice it will be detected. One difference from the previous example is that it will automatically select the latest firmware version included with this release. Simply click on the program button and the controller will be upgraded with new firmware. If you have any questions, please go to our website and click on Contact Us. If you would like to be notified of new videos, don't forget to subscribe and click on Notify and you will be informed of new videos.